the Schneebeck Concert Hall, whether you're here in person or watching on the live stream, um, we're in for a really great treat tonight. Uh, tonight's a celebration of art and teaching and life um, through the lens of Carla Flagar, who is retiring this year. Uh, Carla's, Carla's been a part of the faculty for 34 years. A long time. Yeah. Which is really incredible since she's only 28 years old. So. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, it's been really fun to put this concert together tonight, and there's nothing that brings more joy to me as an artist than to celebrate a, a really amazing human being, a sensational teacher, pedagogue, and a friend. So we've had some fun. Carla told me that I wasn't allowed to make this about her. Okay. <laughs> But I thought, well, you know, it's kind of hard when you, uh, when you think about it, it's like, I made it about the students, but when you make it about the students, it's really about the teacher as well. So it's, it's about many, many different facets tonight. And so um, I would like to introduce to the stage here in just a second a, a very special ensemble uh, that was brought together um, through the efforts of a, of a, of a graduate, um, of a grad from Puget Sound, Drew Shipman, who I called right away and said, hey, I need some help working on this. So Drew lives in Chicago. And uh, he's a music educator. And so he's like, I'll be your graduate student. I'm like, oh, perfect. This is going to be great. So Drew helped to assemble the following ensemble. So I'm going to introduce to the stage here the Legacy Flute Ensemble, conducted by Darren Taves, who is a professor at Long Beach and also the principal flutist with the Sinfonietta is, and was in Carla's very first studio when she started teaching here at Puget Sound. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Legacy Flute Ensemble.
going to release in 25 minutes. <laughs> so I don't want them to be bored. We're going to have one more good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So they rehearsed for a matter of like an hour today. <laughs> um, and the members of the ensemble span Carlo's entire career. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Darren Taves here, who's an outstanding professional flutist, kind of when, I, when he found out we were going to do something special, it was like, I'm going to be in town actually for the Sinfonietta, because he has a concert tomorrow. And uh, I thought, well, this is perfect. So he offered, like, do you want me to conduct something? I'm going to play. I'm like, oh my gosh, if you can conduct this flute on someone, it would be great. special because there were members from Carlos' current flute studio on stage as well, and so it spans your entire 34 years, Carl, I just love it. And it's really special, too, um, for all of us because the, the alumni that come back um, and share these experiences together offer perspectives from their past, from when they were here. And so in the joy that began in our building yesterday till t today was, has just been infectious, and we've been having a, a really, really fantastic time with every, putting everything together. So the next piece, um, well, actually, at this point, I, I do want to invite an alumnus back uh, to the stage here uh, to say a few words. So uh, please welcome to the microphone, Tavia Egebrotten. Hello, everybody, and hi, Carla. <laughs> So I graduated the class of 2020 and the 2021 program, and Carla was so gracious to let me sneak into the flute studio during my master's program. So I got to make wonderful music just a little bit longer, and so I'm so grateful for that. So I want to share something, and this comes from my heart and all of us over here. And so while there have been so many iconic moments in Carla's impressive career, there is one teaching technique that I will always take with me, during studio class, she would oftentimes have students perform solos, and while they thought they were working on memorizing, what they didn't know was that Carla was going to work on their focus. And so, while they were playing, um, she would ever so casually walk around like teachers do, and as they're playing, they think, okay, this is normal stuff. She's gonna come back and be like, oh yeah, your quarter notes are a little too short, or something like that and she would suddenly bang on the piano and scare them. Her goal was for them to stay focused. But even though we watched her walk up and she looked at us like, okay, I'm really about to do this, but they don't know that, terrified me every single time. And honestly, I think every time I go to play, I am gonna turn around to make sure she's not there about to play something for me. And I think I speak for all of us, current and former members of Carla's studio, that she not only managed to eloquently teach us the artistry of playing the flute, but also how to be better humans and live balanced and fulfilling lives. Excuse me. <laughs> so Carla, from the bottom of my heart and everyone's heart, thank you. We hope that whatever adventure lies ahead is full of love, happiness, and holds as much artistry and light as you have provided us. Thanks. So next on the program is David Mislanka's, uh, one of the movements from David Mislanka's very um, an incredible composition, Songbook for Flute and Wind Ensemble. Uh, some years back, I was fortunate enough to work on this piece, unfortunately interrupted by COVID. Um, and it went on the back burner. And the ensemble actually did play it, but during those times where we had to sit eight feet apart and we had to play through these terrible masks and it was just horrendous. And so, in bringing this back, it's like, we're going to do it the way it was intended to be done. And when I was thinking about which movements to perform and who might do this, the first person, of course, that came to mind was Drew Shipman, our soloist tonight. Uh, Drew uh, worked on this piece when he was a student here in Carla's studio, and he actually created a piano reduction of the score um, uh, with permission uh, from uh, the Mislanka Foundation um, and, his, and his son who runs uh, his business now uh, since David's passing. So Drew's uh, piano reduction is now published and is, is being used, which is a huge, uh, tremendous uh, resource for, for flute players uh, and to, to, to perform this repertory without a wind ensemble. The second movement here is titled Sulvitur Ambulando, which means it is solved by walking. 
And David believed that all of our problems could be found, all of our problems really could be solved just through walking and finding solutions and ideas. Um, and he was a big believer in it in the Montana mountains. So without any further ado, please welcome alumnus Drew Shipman to the stage.
Okay, moving right along here. Um, the next composition uh, is by Joel Puckett, one of my dear friends. Um, guy, I like a lot of composers for a lot of different reasons. Um, I think most of us do that are artists because we like different facets of our, exploring different facets of our soul as an artist. And Joel is a very, very spiritual person. And this piece here, The Shadow of Sirius, is a, an epic flute solo work that has um, six soloists in the concert hall and one on stage. It also calls for a wonderful wind ensemble to set the backdrop to this piece. It's based on three poems, and it is in three movements, although they're a taka, which means they're going to go one right after the other. Um, and, and they're pretty seamlessly uh, do so. Um, to perform this work, the story <laughs> is that uh, we had Joel Puckett on campus some years ago uh, for the Society of, Compos uh, Society of Composers International Conference that we hosted. And he was our, our featured composer, and we were performing a piece of his called the, uh, That Secret from the River, which I think is one of the most important works that has been written in modern days for uh, wind ensemble. Joel was so impressed with my principal flutist at the time that he kept in contact with her and he, gave, he sent her the solo to this piece and said, you need to play this. I would love for you to play this someday. So we actually programmed it, I think the very next season here, um, and featured this next soloist um, who's just um, an incredible artist. Uh, Chloe Upshaw graduated from the university and went on to earn her master's degree uh, at Tennessee and is currently uh, doing her doctoral studies in flute performance. And she's just one of the most incredible people on the planet and an incredible soul. So please welcome to the stage, Chloe Upshaw.
Well, yeah, we have a white Jeep in the parking lot that has a dog in it, that the back window is all the way down. Our students are just concerned about it.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the second half. Uh, so we're going to kick things off on the second half with the third movement of uh, David Mitzlanka's songbook for flute, um, which is titled In Loving Memory. A a much of David's music uh, is infused uh, with uh, Bach chorales. Uh, it was something that he incorporated in much of his writing and found great inspiration in. And so this movement is based on one of those chorales. It's a gorgeous movement. And tonight it's going to be played by a senior uh, here at Puget Sound, Grace Playstead, who is double major, getting a I'm sorry, dual degree, uh, flute performance and environmental policy and decision making, because this is what Puget Sound students do. They always, one degree isn't enough. Back in my day, I was like, I, it's, it's enough, it's enough. So I really applaud the students here for being overachievers. But Grace would like to say a few words uh, before she plays a solo. Please, so please welcome to the microphone, Grace Playstead. This is way too tall, and I'm not going to adjust it. Um, but hello, everyone. My name is Grace. Um, OK, thank you. Thank you. OK. Um, hello, my name is Grace, and uh, I drew the short straw for talking on behalf of the current students tonight. No, just kidding. I love you all. Um, OK. Um, and I'm actually, right now, Carla's like, oh my gosh, this girl is crazy. Why is she talking right before she's performing? You are, like, I can't believe you right now. Yeah, I know, Carla. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. But I am actually going to talk about something that is a really important reminder for me to have right now, um, right before I solo. Um, so my freshman year, we were on Zoom um, because it was 2020. And I was in a lesson with Carla, and I was playing the first movement, the Andante, from J.S. Box Sonata in E minor. Um, and I was playing it really well. I was really in touch with like what I was doing. And she says, OK, stop. That's great. Uh, James Galloway just walked in the room. Now play it. And I freaked out because I have a tendency to overthink everything in my life. Um, and I have a tendency to overthink while I'm playing as well. So she said, you just need to shut up and play your notes. <laughs> uh, shut up and play your notes. And you play this, the, the, you play the note you're playing right now, and you play its relationship to the next note. And that's all you need to do. That's all that you worry about as a musician in the moment when you're performing. So Carla, thank you for everything. And right now, I'm literally going to shut up talking. And like, I'm going to quiet my mouth and my brain. And I'm going to go play my notes. <laughs>
All right, so at this time, uh, I am, we have, <laughs> that's, the, that's what, I missed that so much during COVID. I'm so glad we're back. Um, okay, so we have a little set change here that we're going to do um, in order to play um, our final piece on the program. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this piece while we're making the set change. So we're going to, uh, the, there's a couple misprints in the program. Um, we are only performing three movements of the symphonic metamorphosis coming up here. We'll be performing the first movement, um, the third movement, Andantino, um, and the final movement, the march tonight. Um, um, but uh, in order to perform this piece, uh, we drew not only, uh, well, earlier, our flute alumni to perform in various ways with the flute ensemble, uh, but also on this piece, uh, calls for forces, uh, numbers that we just don't have right now, uh, five trumpets and English horn and all the extras that make this piece so special. So I, when you look at your uh, personnel list there, you're going to see some guest artists with us. Um, many of these uh, guest artists are actually alumni of the University of Puget Sound, um, and they're local artists. And, and also, the, those that aren't alumni um, are performers in the Tacoma Concert Band of which I'm the conductor and artistic director as well. And so uh, you're going to see a few extra guests with us here. Uh, Hindemith's masterwork, The Symphonic Metamorphosis, was originally written for orchestra. It's based on themes of Carl Maria von Weber. Uh, and he takes these more obscure themes of Weber's, and he weaved them into this really beautiful work that was originally supposed to be a ballet. But it didn't work out. But he liked the material so much that he created it for orchestra. And then he liked that so much, and he thought, you know, this is, would be really good for wind band. So he asked his colleague, Keith Wilson, at Yale to make this transcription specifically, and, and Hindemith had his eye on it the whole time. So we consider this, this piece really um, a band work as well as an orchestral work. And it's just really, really spectacular and sparkling and fun to play. Um, let's see, a couple other thank yous here, I think, are in order. So um, uh, I want to thank the flutists that were playing in uh, the Puckett, uh Shadow of Sirius that were in the audience here. I failed to turn around and recognize them. So can we have a round of applause for our six flutists in the audience? I also wish to thank our director of the School of Music, Tracy Doyle, who was one of the flutists, actually, on the pocket, standing right down here. Tracy is a great supporter of all, every department here at the School of Music, and she's been such a wonderful addition to our faculty. Um, so thank you so much, Tracy, for all the support. We're going to have, I think they, they need me here, actually. Um, so, um, but before, I'm going to come right back to the microphone. I want to make sure the setup is getting done right. Okay, thank you so much for your patience there. Uh, just a little, it's a 
It's just wonderful to be back and have so many people on stage, so I'm very, very excited. Okay, uh, without further ado here, before the Symphonic Metamorphosis, I would just like to say, Carla, um, you have been just such an inspiration since I arrived on campus in 2009. Um, this is my 15th year, I believe, here, and you have been um, the most incredible colleague um, and an inspiration for me. You are a standard of excellence and friendship, uh, collegiality, um, you are a true artist, and you're an incredible pedagogue. One of our colleagues, Fred Winkler, who is a saxophone teacher, he's on, uh, so about, he's on a leave right now from the university. But when I got here, I said, wow, those flutes are so good. It's like, wow. He's like, yeah, Carla can take a cabbage and turn it into a flute player. <laughs> and he's right. <laughs> I've seen cabbages running around campus playing flutes. It's been crazy. But it is true. It is true, Carla. You, you've, um, it's been such a pleasure to work with you. And, and we have so many outstanding faculty here at the university. We really, truly are blessed. Uh, our studio faculty are just simply outstanding. So, Carla, I'm going to miss you, but I know that you're going to be out there. You're still going to be working and having fun. Uh, I know you're going to be traveling a ton, and I know you're going to be staying in touch. But I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for always making me you feel so welcome here and making me a better artist and human being. Thank you, Carla.
thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Carla, congratulations on an amazing career. We have a reception that is over in the rotunda um, that you're welcome to join us. It's in the Student Union Building. Um, and so thank you so much again for being here tonight, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.